Hello, and welcome to The Advantage Investor, a Raymond James Limited podcast, a podcast that provides perspective for Canadian investors who want to remain knowledgeable, informed, and focused on long-term success. We are recording this on April 23rd, 2024. I'm Chris Cooksey from the Raymond James Corporate Communications and Marketing Department. And today, our old friend, head fixed income trader, Harvey Livy, returns to the podcast. As always, Harvey is here to discuss fixed income markets. Welcome back to the Advantage Investor, Harvey. Thanks for taking the time today. I hope you are doing fantastic. Thanks, Chris. Yeah, I am for sure. Good. Good. Now, you know this better than I, but I even know it. Uh, fixed income is an important part of many portfolios uh, for investors in Canada uh, for many different reasons. Uh, so this is a very important and interesting topic as always. So uh, if you're ready, I'd like to jump right in with this question. And we'll start off with the recent federal budget and the new capital gains tax. And I'd like to get your opinion on how that affects fixed income markets and investors. Well, the crux of it all was just the uh, capital gains uh, like threshold that they changed, but it really doesn't affect the normal client. Um, basically, what they said was anything over any capital gains that are over two hundred and fifty thousand dollars would be taxed at a higher rate than what it's being taxed at right now. So right now, capital gains get. Uh, taxed at 50%, 50% of your tax rate. At uh, $250,000 threshold, they're going to be taxed at five-eighths of your uh, tax rate. So a little bit of a higher rate. Um, but that said, 250000 of capital gains a year, unless you have a house you're selling, um, some big, you know, something big in your life that has happened, a cottage, something like that. Um, it's not for the normal uh, client in my mind. Uh, like a yearly, uh, a yearly tax uh, on or a yearly capital gain of two hundred fifty thousand is a big number. Um, yeah. You figure it's it's basically five five million dollars in invested assets at a 5% yield over a year. That is $250,000 if it was all uh, in um, in capital gains. And that's a big number. So I don't think most people are going to be affected by it. Um, I know personally I won't be unless unless I have a, you know, extra, extenuating event happen in my life where, you know, somebody passes away and you get a windfall of money and you might have to, you know, you're going to have one year of, uh, you know, paying this extra fee. But other than that, you know, I, I, I don't think it's really going to affect the average investor. Okay. Now let's just uh, move on to, you know, our usual recap, where we've been and where we're going uh, sure. and take it from there. Well, last time I was on was uh, January 17th and basically uh, most economists on the street thought that uh, I think they changed their view from five to six uh, rate cuts uh, in the U S uh, this year. And at that point, I think in January we were more talking three to four um, and I believe I was saying, you know, three would be probably close to reality. Well, now they're even cutting that back. And, uh, most people think that, uh, you know, we're looking at between two and three rate cuts, um, in the U S, uh, for this year. Um, and some are actually even, uh, predicting that we're not going to have any at all. Right. Um, so stuff has changed. Stuff has, uh, you know, dramatically changed over the last uh, three months. Um, now, our bond market really hasn't changed that much. We've increased by in yield by about 30 basis points since we last talked. Um, and that is just the indecision going on with rates and uh, what's going on in the market. If you take a look, um, in Canada... CPI or the, uh, you know, the inflation numbers, like uh, this month they came out and year over year we're at 2.9%. Uh, uh, that's slightly higher than a plus 2.8% uh, that was our last uh, um, 
uh, recorded number, which was the the following from the following month. So it went up slightly. I it, but it was still in line. It was in line with estimates, and still in Canada, I think there will still be you know two to three rate cuts in Canada. No question this year. I think they will start, and we seem to have we seem to have inflation more in line than the United States, the U.S. In other words, in in a different way, their their CPI is a lot higher. It's three point five three point five percent year over year last uh, last uh, done this month, um, and that was from three point two the month previous. So it's gone up by point three um, over the over the month. The survey was uh, survey was actually a little bit lower as well. So that doesn't uh, help it any as well because the economists are thinking you know if they're thinking cpi is going up and it goes up even further than that that hurts them uh, th- that hurts the bond market so right. i'm thinking us probably won't have as uh won't have as many rate cuts as canada will this year i think canada will start in june uh right now economists are uh, are predicting about a 62% um, cut in June and two to three by the end of the year. Um, in the U.S., they're looking at uh, it's only about 47% chance of there being the first cut in the U.S. by September. So it's only like a 50 50 draw there and uh, maybe two cuts by the year end. Okay. Okay. Um, and if we're talking, probably the next question you're going to ask, Chris, is where should we be invested? Yes, it is now, Harvey. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I think still think that if you need money in the short end, uh, short term, the short end is very attractive in this market. It really is uh, getting over five percent for you know six months to a year out. Very attractive. Uh, you know, one year uh, GICs right now are over five percent. Uh, one year uh, corporate product is over five percent. It really, really looks attractive. But I think what you have to remember is that these rates, you know, the economists are still saying rates are going to go lower. It's just taking a lot more time than anyone right. thought. But when they do start going lower, you're not going to have the chance to reload. Yeah. You know, so. I think go back to what we always say and uh, what you always say to me, what's the safest way to be in a ladder? Right. So do your one to five year ladder and worry about it five years from now or like every year, you know, change up, but you've got a five year ladder in place and you're, you're taking advantage of the higher rates uh, going forward uh, right now. So I would probably stick to a one to five year ladder uh, keep it rolling every year, and hopefully we get a normalized yield curve, and you get to um, re uh, reload or you know pick product a year, two years, three years from now, which is higher in the rung than what you'd already done. But uh, I think that is the safest way to be if you want to be just in an area and you think you know just in one term. Um, I think five to seven year term is the right area to be in. Um, but a one to five year ladder or one to seven year ladder, one to nine year ladder, one to 10 year ladder, you can't go wrong. You're right. You know, know, you're, it's, it's the safest way to be in the market. That's for sure. Now, last time you were here, we talked about how, you know, rates were peaking or have peaked. And as you mentioned now, um, they may not have come down as quickly. We probably talked about having maybe a a, a, a May cut uh, back then, p- yes. potentially uh, on the, and that's been moved out uh, a lot. But there's that old adage, you know, the central bank will st- will stay higher for longer and uh, and shorter for longer than what the markets anticipate because um, obviously they're a forward forward looking sort of thing. Um, but th- I mean, theoretically though, I mean that that still stands. You know, we're 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 near the peak. It looks like, and whether that we've gotten an extra few months to to take advantage of that or not, we, we we're still in that situation. Absolutely agreed. Absolutely right. agreed. That's it's exactly uh, that's exactly it. The way I look at it is, yeah, we're we're getting a, a few more months to take advantage of it. So 
get your eggs in the basket and take advantage of exactly what uh, you want to have uh, out there in the fixed income space. And, uh, you know, hopefully, you know, the market starts doing what it's supposed to do. And uh, by June, we get a rate cut in Canada and, uh, you know, people's mortgages are a lot more affordable to uh, for people to uh, actually uh, pay down their house. That's yeah. Sure. And uh, just you mentioned eggs in a basket. We just, you know, talked to your Raymond James advisor to to find out how many of those eggs go in what basket and in what sort of mixture of eggs uh, to make sure, um, you know, you, you are properly diversified for your needs. Well, that's exactly it. That's exactly <laughs> it. Well, when rates were at one percent, it was hard to uh, it was hard to convince people that yes, you still do need fixed income. In you your, still need a basket. <laughs> you still need a basket. You just don't have a basket of equities. You need a basket of everything. And uh, at five percent, though, it's it's definitely uh, compelling to. Uh, you know, put some fixed income into your portfolio and it makes total sense. So why not put it in now, extend term a little bit and make sure it's it's going to be in your basket for a few years. Now, that's something that's thought. just occurred to me, and this is more of a general uh, question. Um, you know, how often does the Bank of Canada meet uh, and come up with these rate decisions? Is it is it a monthly thing uh, or is it a, you know, a few times a year type thing? It's um, it's a few times a year. Right now, um, it is uh, quarterly. I just want to make sure I'm not just saying a lie. Um, <laughs> Much appreciated. And if our podcast had more budget, we would have an, a musical interlude right now. But uh, so this is a, a very small operation, so we can't afford those uh, fees on the music. So yeah, that's very true. Well, you know what? They, they have set meeting dates. And right. it's sort of every like six weeks ish. Right. It's it's but they're set like they're right. set a year out. So like the next one we have is June, and then July, then September, then October, then December. So it's kind of hit and miss. Right. To right. Be quite honest. Uh, so probably about ten times a year, I would guess. Yeah. That is. And then, and then, but it's important for markets to know when they meet because yes. obviously. Uh, people are making decisions ahead of time and 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 placing where they think it's going on the old board ahead of time. So it's important that that schedule's out there. I oh, just yeah. had never realized how often they meet. I know they every so often I didn't think it was I didn't think it was as much as six weeks. I thought it was uh, closer to two months. So right. there you well, go. it's pretty close. Yeah. All right. Any final thoughts for us today, Har- Harvey? Um, I think the other thing is like. I touched a little bit on the after tax and how it has increased by a lot or sorry, it hasn't increased by a lot for the normal person, but it has increased if you're, you know, hit that 250,000 threshold. I still, there are still opportunities in especially short term uh, bonds um, like one to five years for after tax yields. After tax yields are still beating GIC rates. Okay. In corporate, uh, you know, high quality bonds. So it is still something to look at and talk with your financial advisor about because it definitely does make sense for, uh, you know, 90% of the, uh, uh, clients. That's for sure. Well, uh, I just want to thank you for your time, Harvey. Uh, always a pleasure to speak with you. And uh, we will talk again in, in a few weeks, probably somewhere around mid-June after we yes. hear from the Bank of Canada. <laughs> nope, that sounds good. Thank you very much. <laughs> thank you. Reach out to us at Advantage Investor Pod at Raymond James. Subscribe to the Advantage Investor on Apple, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. Please contact your advisor with any questions you have. On behalf of Raymond James and the Advantage Investor, thank you for taking the time to listen today. Until next time, stay well. This podcast is for informational purposes only. Statistics and factual data and other information are from sources Raymond James Limited believes to be reliable, but their accuracy cannot be guaranteed. Information is furnished on the basis and understanding that Raymond James Limited is to be under no liability whatsoever in respect thereof. 
It is provided as a general source of information and should not be construed as an offer or solicitation for the sale or purchase of any product and should not be considered tax advice. Raymond James Advisors are not tax advisors and we recommend that clients seek independent advice from a professional advisor on tax-related matters. Securities-related products and services are offered through Raymond James Limited member of the Canadian Investor Protection Fund. Insurance products and services are offered through Raymond James Financial Planning Limited, which is not a member of Canadian Investor Protection Fund.